Find your place in Romans chapter 5, please. Romans chapter 5, if you would, please. I trust you had a, had a good week in the Lord. Uh, I can't believe it's June already. Uh, Amen. It seems like it was just New Year's. Right. It's, like, it's, almost like, it's almost like God has kind of increased the tempo, in a sense, a little bit. Like kind of things just kind of are picked up time-wise. Um, but uh, <laughs> I'm getting older. Yes, that's, <clears throat> that's probably the big part of it, yes. Uh, anyway, Romans chapter 5, if you would please find your place there with me. We'll not look at all these verses again as we did look at uh, some of these last week, but we'll look at a few. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to read, if you would please, starting in verse number number 6 of Romans chapter 5. It says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Uh, you might put a little footnote there. Uh, Christ died for everybody. Amen. Amen. Not just some, not just a few. Christ died for everybody. You might put another footnote there. Remember that the next time that you're um, uh, impatient or upset with perhaps a lost person. Wait a minute. Uh, Christ died for him or her as well. And uh, aren't you glad that, that uh, uh, Christ's mercy extended was extended to all? And, and God help us to be merciful in our witness as a Christian and remember where Christ has brought us up from. But Romans chapter 5 again, verse 6, For we were yet without strength in due time. Christ died for the ungodly. <clears throat> For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us. In that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life. Amen. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your grace and mercy. May you help us to be good listeners this morning. May our prayer be to thee, Father, of Lord, uh, to strengthen, to encourage our hearts. Uh, to challenge each of us and then help us to be doers, Father, not just hearers. May, Lord, uh, if we have a hardened heart toward the sharing of the gospel with the lost, may you soften that heart. May you remind us where Christ has brought each of us from. May you remind us, Father, time is short. Help us to redeem the time. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We looked uh, last week, and by way of brief review this morning, through these verses 6 through 11, there were some things I, I pointed out regarding Regarding the lost. One, and this is where I was also, okay, and you before you were saved. Without strength. Amen. Powerless to save oneself, morally weak. Romans chapter 7. Um, Romans 7, just one verse we looked at. Romans 7, verse 18. Paul reminds us here, and the word of God does in Romans 7, 18. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Again, the lost, without strength, powerless to save oneself, morally weak. As Christians, Titus chapter 3 if you'll turn there with me briefly or quickly, Titus chapter 3. As Titus, uh, in Titus chapter 3, reading in verse number 5. Titus 3, 5. As a Christian, I can look back and you talk about God's amazing grace. Amen. Involved in one's salvation. Titus 3 5 not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us how by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior that being justified by his grace 
we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. As Christians, Christ is our strength. As Christians, it's still God's grace. As a Christian, you can reflect back and look at God's amazing grace in your salvation. But not only is there God's grace involved in salvation, but there's God's grace involved in serving day to day. I need God's grace. I need a double portion of it. I need God's grace to get up this morning, get out of bed, and get up to the house of God. Amen? Amen. Yes. Paul summed it up in Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. In Galatians chapter 2, verse number 20 says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. It's still all of God's grace. And you say, well, Brother Doug, could you reinforce that? Sure. Philippians chapter 4, we've looked at, and I quote this verse many times. And I'm probably as... I'm probably as prone to forget this as perhaps some of you might be. It's one thing to teach this lesson. It's another thing to put it into application. Mm -hmm. Philippians chapter 4. Look with me carefully in these verses again here in verse number 11. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. God help us to be content, folks. Where God has placed you, consider it a ministry. Amen? So the air conditioner is not working. Thank God that you've got air to breathe. Thank God you have a place of work today. Thank God you have a family that said church. You can go on and on and on. So when you start complaining, hold it. Paul had learned in whatsoever state he was there with to be content. Amen. Goes on to say here, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. There is the key to Paul's life right there. There is the key to the Christian's life right there in Philippians chapter 4 verse number 13. But I don't know if I can be a good, I can do all things through Christ. But I, again, it's not your strength. It's Christ's strength. You know, often as God would work through us and in us more, it's often our attitude that's the problem. Amen? God would like to do great things through some of us, most of us, all of us, but often our attitude gets in the way. And perhaps we allow the flesh to get the victory. Well, I can't share the gospel. They're going to laugh and make fun. I can do all things through Christ. Store the word of God up in your heart. God will open that door that you'll have an answer when God speaks to your heart to give that answer. You don't have to kick the door in. I can do all things through Christ. Christian, hmm? how is it this morning? Uh, we looked at, in verse 6 of Romans 5, of, of ungodly. Not only the lost regarding without strength, but other characters, ungodly. That's sinful, impious, acting contrary to the nature of God, neglecting the fear and worship of God, without reverence for God, rebelling against God's laws. You'll find in Romans chapter 1, and I tell you, look across the landscape of America today. Romans 1 is like a beacon. Is it not? Romans chapter 1. Read this chapter if you haven't. Amen. Go back and reread this. We'll just read a few verses out of Romans chapter 1. A one of the characteristics of the law is not only without strength, but ungodly. Romans chapter 1, verse number 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God that gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who, this is, this is interesting in verse 32, it says, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And boy, you see that in America today. I'm convinced you take, the folks know about God's judgment. There is a, there is a, there is in the man's conscience, not only a knowledge of God, but there's also a knowledge of coming judgment. And you can sear your conscience over to the point of ignoring it, and yet there's still that in the background, isn't there? Romans 1.32 says, who knowing the judgment of God still proceed anyway. Speaking of ungodly here, now as Christians, 1 Timothy chapter 4, 
First Timothy chapter four. If you'll turn with me there, First Timothy chapter four. <clears throat> and verse seven of First Timothy chapter four tells us. <clears throat> But refuse profane and old wise fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. As God's children, you're to exercise yourself in this area of godliness. You'll find if you look with me also in the book of Titus chapter 2. Well, Brother Doug, does that mean there's, there's perfection on this side of... Uh, no, I'm not saying that. But you'll find as a Christian, there will be a desire based on the Spirit of God knocking on your heart's door to do right. Does that make sense? Every day it's full of choices, right? It, to do wrong or to do right. And depending on how close you are to God in the area of spiritual connection, so to speak, prayer, Bible study, and things like that, well, often dictates of how we make that decision. Galatians we'll look at here in a little bit. Um, I'm not speaking about perfection, but I am speaking about God's children, if you're saved, ought to have a concern for doing right. There ought to be, Lord, would you have me to do that? It becomes a habit. Amen. I'll say this, the further you get away from God, you can't handle it on your own strength. Oh, yes, I can. No, you can't. Um, I'm a poster child for that. Amen? Trust me. On your own, in your own strength, oh, you'll make battle for a while, but eventually it's going to overcome you. Amen? And the devil's sharp. He knows just which area is your weakness, and that's what gets hammered at. Amen? Be careful here. goes on to say, in Titus, if you're there with me, in Titus chapter number 2, verse 11, says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly. You see what it says in verse number 12 here, at the latter part of it? In this present world. God wants his children to do right now. You, don't, you, can, actually, you can start today. Amen? Listen, with the Lord there's forgiveness. With the Lord there's mercy. And with the Lord there's another chance and another chance and another chance. With me there may not be. Amen? Perhaps you can relate to that. I'm not so merciful sometimes. I expect, I expect, I expect. And yet, God knocks on me on the heart and says, Hey, 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 I'm the standard for living. Now you compare your life with me and let's take care of some business. Amen? We've got some business to take care of. In fact, it's been years since I've heard from you. Oh, but I, no, no. I'm talking about real time spent with me getting the closet cleaned out. Amen? I'm not talking about the little dust job that you call taking care of. I'm talking about me helping you take care of the closet. Deeper, deepest recesses of one's heart, so to speak. Amen. Does that make sense? Come on, Christian. I, been there? Do you know what I'm speaking to? You can drag around the baggage of unconfessed sin for years. Yes, amen. And wonder and scratch your head why God's hand of full blessing doesn't seem to be upon your life. It's probably because God is trying to get you to take care of some business. Amen. And we refuse to, like children, of no, I'm not going to do that. Because it's not as bad as... It's awful quiet. Amen. Yeah. Moving on to 2 Peter chapter 1. This is like a report card check. 2 Peter chapter 1. We've taught through these verses. And it's, a, it's a, almost like a good time. Let, let's, let's review here just a second here in 2 Peter chapter 1. On this matter of, of uh, Christian graces. 2 Peter chapter 1. It says here in verse 5. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Amen. And to virtue, knowledge. This is, it's like a report card check, is it not? You can go down this list and where am I with my Heavenly Father in this first chapter of Second Peter? Add to your faith virtue and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, uh-oh. What's that say? Amen. Godliness. It is in there. 
God wants you to do something about it, right? And to godliness, brotherly kindness, and so on and so forth. It's a good test. <clears throat> it's one thing to say you're saved and a Christian, but are you living it? Right? I, folks, I stumble and trip during the week. Pray for me as I pray for you. Amen. About the time you think you got one area nailed down in Christian living, Amen. two more pop up. And, it, and yet that was 20 years ago that was an issue, but why is it an issue today? Amen. Uh, listen, on this side, on this side, Paul nails it in Romans chapter 7. Amen. In my flesh dwells no good thing. But the will is in me. Amen. Yes. Yeah. So I can do all things, not through myself, or make the effort anyway, but I can do all things through Christ. So if there's an area in your life this morning, Christian, that's causing, um, perhaps robbing you of God's blessing, let's take it a step further, perhaps robbing um, your family of God's full blessing, and a step further, perhaps robbing the family of God of God's full blessing, perhaps it's time to take care of business. Right? So think about that. As we look at these verses, it's like a self-check. Are you living a godly life? Are you making the effort to? Also, one of the characteristics of the lost, not only without strength, ungodly, sinners. One who misses the mark. It describes the fallen condition of men. It is applicable to all men. We read that in Romans 5, 8. But as Christians, Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. I think that there's ever a struggle in Christianity. It's got to be this area of right living. Um, what's sin to you may not be sin to me. Now, the, the question from yourself should be, what, Lord, is sin to you? Amen. And may you help me not be caught up in it. Who is the standard for this matter of deciding what is sin and what is not? If we compare ourselves on a horizontal level, it doesn't take me long to find somebody else who's, perhaps in my eyes, not quite living as well as I am. But God says, no, no, you're not wise comparing yourselves on a horizontal level. Get yourself lined up with me here and we'll make a decision on some of those things. But Romans chapter 6, it says, verse number 1, What shall we say then, Christian? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? The question is asked here, look, you're saved by grace, but it isn't a license to sin. It's a license to do right. Does that make sense? It's a license to do right. God is looking at his children and expecting some uh, a proper behavior. As parents with children, you expect your children to do right. I hope, right parents? They're not always going to. There's going to be disappointments and heartache. But as parents, you expect them. You, may I say, you, you ask or sometimes demand. Is that a good way to put it? Demand? Require? Some, I don't know. Uh, but you, but you, God's the same way with his children. He has a certain expectation of, of his children living right. And he has also allowed you this extra help of his grace. Amen. It's all how you look at things. Well, I just can't get... Yes, you can by the grace of God. Because you'll find here in Romans chapter 6, if you go a little further here, in verse number 11 it says, Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but, but alive unto God, how through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but oh, here it is, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. There's this matter, and we mentioned in this class time and time again, of yielding. I don't feel like yielding. God would have you to yield. He has the right of way. Now how that works is simply this. Sin says, I, the flesh says, I want to do this. The Holy Spirit of God says, no, I don't want you to do that. You're faced with a decision. Amen. Amen. To yield to the working of the Holy Spirit of God yield to the working of the flesh. And I'll give you a hint. If you spend enough time away from God and you run on your past, how, and I'll say Samson's a good example of that. He wished not that the Lord had departed from him. You can think back and you can look back and you can see where God helped you with certain areas of your life. 
and you remember that because you were I like how the marvelously helped <laughs> amen but you cannot run on the past blessings in a sense does that make sense you need to be hooked up daily with your Heavenly Father Galatians chapter 5 tells us it's you know it's it in a way it's elementary may God help each of us to make application because really the this the scripture is pretty plain Praise the Lord. what shall we continue in sin that grace may abound God, no, God forbid you weren't saved to do that. You're saved to serve God. You're saved to serve to do right. But in Galatians chapter 5 it goes on to say, look carefully here in verse number 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit, uh oh, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. It's a battle. Just being here this morning, how many really wanted to be here? Don't lie, that's a second sin, amen? Amen, really? <laughs> amen? Listen, the flesh didn't want to be for the most part here, okay? The flesh doesn't really care for it. And that's, and that's not to... But there's, give it the effort, amen? Amen. But it's the Spirit of God that ultimately drives that decision, amen? It's God that's... You yield to one or the other in this matter, this decision making. It goes on to say here, this I said, and walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. Essentially, it's the spirit of God that helps you make the decision. It gives you the right attitude about the things of God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Go, Amen. I was glad. We can sing that. We can mumble it. We can do it. We can, we can go through the motions. But you want to be able to sing that song with a true heart under your heavenly Father because it's a privilege to go to the house of God. Amen. Are you always going to feel like it? Feelings change. Amen. You'll find in verse number 22, this walking in the Spirit, there's a direct result here. Input equals output. Verse 22 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. This matter of walking in the Spirit, we've discussed this many times in this class. You don't just walk in the Spirit. Amen? What's spirit and what is truth? What is spirit and what is truth? The word of God. Amen? Think, amen? amen. It's what's spirit and what is truth? The word of God. Amen? You say, well, how do I connect spiritually each day? Get into the word of God. Amen? It's spirit and it's truth. Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, right? Hebrews chapter 4. So this matter of of the flesh versus the spirit, um, get into the Word of God. Amen. It's as simple as that. Don't set the sword aside and expect to go on for the Lord for days and weeks without being in it. God has would have His children to be renewed uh, daily or minute by minute, hour by hour. Uh, look with me in in the book of Colossians. Well, I've heard this all before, Brother Doug. I, you know, I made application last year with this. <laughs> it's my problem occasionally, amen? I fool myself. Well, I, I made application last month with this. I should be good to go for at least a couple of months. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1 it says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall we also appear with him in glory. Now look at here. There's, God wants you to put to death some things in, in verse 5 here. He wants you to put off some things uh, if you look with me in verse number 8. You're to put off the, the anger the wrath, the malice, filthy communication, etc. But then he would have you to put on. 
in verse 10. And have put on the new man which is renewed, how? In knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Now, put on therefore... As the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And of all these things, put on charity, which is a bond of perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called one body, and be ye thankful. And verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Now this putting off and putting on, I give you a hint, we've talked about this many times, it's going to come from a spiritual application. Make the effort to do right. Amen? Make the effort to do right. But this putting off the anger, anybody got anger problems? Anger management issues? Not a soul in here. Amen, brother. <laughs> Confession is good for the soul. I do sometimes too. Sometimes it's probably a minor lie. Amen? But uh, uh, oftentimes I find if I reflect and I'm honest with myself at the end of the day or late at night, I go and, and think, it's, this is good, amen? You think back, get the word of God out, say, Lord, how did the day go? What were the high points and what were the low points? And am I still having issues? Uh, sure enough, I was, I was angry today and I got out of hand with my mouth and now you've got a bigger broom and a bigger dustpan out today again, amen? But get the word of God out. Look at this area of putting off the old and putting on a new. It's spiritual renewal. God's children trip and stumble around in areas of wrestling with sin and areas in their life because they're not plugged in. Well, I heard all this before and I read it before. No, God wants you in the word daily. Amen? Amen. As much as the talk shows, as much as the commentaries, as much as this, as much as that can be helpful... It's ultimately Christ who can do the real work in your life. Amen? Does that make sense? Try it this week. Challenge to the adult Sunday school class. Ask God if there's nearing in your heart and life that he's not pleased with. I don't like to do that because usually the list is long. Amen? But take the top two items that God brings to mind. And ask God help with putting them off. And then ask God to fill that with, with something else here as mentioned in Colossians and see by the end of the week if God doesn't help you with it right but yes listen it comes down to being in the word of God in this matter spiritual renewal I can do all things through Christ Christ and the word are, are one in John 1 okay it comes down to yielding ask God for help with that if it's an anger management issue I know I wear this highway thing out to death in here sometimes, but you just see it out there. Folks are just angry. And it's like, wow, what are they like when they get to work? Amen? Probably the boss. He's running late. Amen? Uh, but, but, there, uh, but God's people ought not to be. Amen? Think about this lesson. We're out of time here, folks. Running a little bit late this morning, but we'll come back next week. It also says one, one other thing about the lost, not only without strength, ungodly sinners, enemies. Enemies of God? Well, yeah. let's stand. We've been dismissed with a word of prayer. Thank you for your attention. Trust the lesson has been a blessing to you.